Well, hello and welcome. Welcome back to Advantage Anywhere. I'm your host, Mona Hilton. I'm the CEO of Genesis Global Technologies, the authors of Advantage Anywhere. And I'm thrilled that you carved time out of your day today to join me and talk about that dirty little secret why your serum is destined to fail, and more importantly, what to do about it. So if you're one of those people who like to challenge the status quo and take your company or organization to the next level, you're at the right place. Now, it sounds so sinister, doesn't it? That dirty little secret. But it's true, I promise you. There are lots of reasons and lots of challenges why CRM fail. And many are well known. But there's also a little, a dirty little industry secret that you should know about. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself just yet. Today we're going to cover the benefits, myths, and pitfalls of CRM, the most common and some little known reasons why CRMs fail, and we're going to address specific strategies to prevent and even correct those fails. So here's a hint, a spoiler alert if you will. The clues lie in your gym membership and in your kids' sports team. So stay with me, I'll explain why. Now, to understand the real problem with our CRM failures, we first have to face reality head on. We have to deal with the history of where we came from, where we're at today as a business climate, and what exactly are those specific challenges that we're facing. Now, if you're pretty much like everyone I know in business today, you're probably very overloaded. You've got a million things you're juggling. You're spending most of your day juggling your priorities, your emails, your calls, your tasks, your communications, your deadlines, and you've probably got a to-do list that really has no end. You're also probably trying to make all your clients and buyers and customers and employees and bosses all happy. That's a task in and of itself. But all the while, you're dodging distractions, distractions that come from your social media buzzing and your phone texting and hundreds of emails that clog up your inbox but really don't align with your goals or where you're headed. And if you also happen to have issues with ADD, you've also got your own self-inflicted distractions, which I can relate to. Now, if you also have a family like I do, it's all compounded by two. Because your other job is what I call, I am, uh, I call myself a domestic goddess. Because you're also making grocery lists. You're playing head chef and coordinating soccer, or in my case, softball schedules. You're acting as a family psychologist. You're a logistics coordinator. You're solving yet another family crisis. If you think about it, it's really an impossible mission. There is no way to get ahead. But yet, you've got to find a way to get it all done. I sometimes call it frenetical busyness. You've got a million, you're going a mile a million, million miles an hour, but in the back of your head, you've also got this wish list that's running that you really mean to get to. But you know what? Life gets in the way, and everything is starting to pile up. And then all of a sudden, one day, you wake up in the middle of the night with what I call an oh shoot moment. Oh shoot, was I supposed to call Mrs. Jones back? Did we drop the ball on that business or that project or that follow-up process or that sale? Did I tell so-and-so about my conversation with Mr. Smith? It's okay if you've had them. We've all had them. Now, if you feel like I'm reading your mail, you are not alone. People across the country have shared some of these very same challenges with me. They've told me things like, there aren't enough hours in the day. I often feel leave feeling like I didn't accomplish what I set out to do. Maybe you have systems on paper, but even if you do, those systems are manual. They rely on memory, maybe a paper checklist, or they're dependent on a person to make sure they get done. And with manual systems, there's no way to see what's really going on. 
you might think, we use spreadsheets for tracking. Our spreadsheets, though, are unreliable. They're time consuming. They're outdated pretty much the second we finish them. And then there's my favorite. I use sticky notes all over my desk to remind me of what's important. Sorry, I couldn't resist. I had to use this graphic. Now, I'd like to share with you a few quick eye-opening stats that will either make you feel really good about your business and your life, or they might just make you say, ouch. Either way, let's take a look. Did you know that 67% of managers cite follow-up as their number one business failure? Not customer service, not sales, not patient care, but follow-up. And the average person spends 30 minutes every morning trying to get organized, figure out where they left off the night, day before, what they need to do. 30 minutes a day, that's what, two and a half hours a week, you get the idea. It's wasted time. And then, you know those web inquiries that people, whether they're leads or uh, di different kinds of inquiries that contact you from your website, if you contact them within five minutes, you are 100 times more likely to reach them and engage them than if you wait just 30 minutes. That sounds impossible, too. And then 80% of the people who inquire about your company or your services never will receive any type of follow-up from your organization. That's pretty sad. We have a saying around here that you need to follow up until they buy, cry, or get a restraining order, whichever comes first. And we're only half joking. These are pretty sobering stats, but have you ever stopped to wonder why some people, some organizations look like this and other ones look more like this? What do you think the difference is? Does one have an easier market, more talented people, better resources? Do they possess intelligence or abilities or maybe innate gifts that the others don't have? Or are they just plain lucky? That's what we want to kind of explore today. And in full disclosure, I want to tell you right up front that we do offer a system to help you put in place and automate all the things that, need, that you need to guarantee your sales and marketing success and turn this disorganized mess on the left into the well-engineered structure on the right. And at the end of the session, I'm going to offer you a free consultation or coaching and a free video as my thank you just for attending today. So before we get to this dirty little industry secret that's dooming your CRM effort, we first have to understand how we got there, how CRM has evolved, and the expectations around CRM. So let's start at the beginning, shall we? In the beginning, darkness covered the face of business. Well, not exactly. But believe it or not, there was a time before CRM. Now, those of you who are millennials might find that unthinkable. But then you probably don't know what a fax machine or a floppy drive or a home phone are either. Anyways, we used to use Rolodexes and business cards and sticky notes. Lots and lots of sticky notes. It wasn't fancy or high tech, but in many ways, it got the job done. We could at least keep track of people and phone numbers. However, it wasn't really efficient. It was pretty disjointed, and you definitely couldn't share your information with anyone, especially management for reporting. And unfortunately, it produced some side effects. Lots and lots of headaches. Now, soon after that, the CRM was born. Goldmine and ACT, they were at least a little bit more organized and more efficient. You could search electronically for information, but they also had some real shortcomings. You were very limited on what you could pull out. Reporting was weak, and they really didn't do anything to make people more efficient. And of course, you still needed those sticky notes. At the end of the day, early CRMs were basically electronic Rolodexes. Now today, if you Google CRM, you're going to get 269 million hits. Get that. There's almost one hit for each person in the United States. So how many CRMs does one country need? And why on earth do we have so many? After all, CRMs are supposed to make your business better, make you more money, make you more profit, right? But I digress. Today, CRMs, they come in all flavors all price points and delivery methods. Some are free and some are really expensive. But there are so many to choose from. Each one claims to be different, special, unique. 
Some of them you can even download from the cloud and start using immediately without even talking to a salesperson. Huh, impressive, right? What could possibly be wrong with that? And yet, people still aren't using their CRMs. In fact, most people will tell you that they don't like their CRM. A few are forced to use theirs, but many just simply refuse to use their CRM. Huh. Now, we could talk about some of the reasons why, most of which you already know, that their CRMs were not specifically tailored for your industry or your business or what it is that you do. And your people aren't properly trained, so therefore they don't take full advantage of the benefits. Generally speaking, companies buy a CRM off the shelf and they don't customize them around their business model. We could talk about how even today, CRMs aren't much more than electronic Rolodex, a place to look up a name and a number and maybe take a note if you're really diligent. What I mean by that is they don't actually do anything to make you successful. They don't make suggestions for what you should do next for follow-up or next steps. They don't help you, help you or prompt you to do the right action. Really, they're designed to monitor you, not to assist you. In fact, about a month ago, I was speaking to a very high-level executive at a world-renowned medical company who told me that their CRM, I'm not going to say what the name is, was nothing more than, quote, just another data silo that didn't communicate with their other data points and people weren't using it or recording their notes. Pretty sad, huh? This is a ginormous company. Let's pause for a moment because you might be wondering what makes me qualified to share on this topic, especially in light of the fact that our company has authored a quote-unquote CRM-like hybrid, one that marries sales and marketing and social communications and follow-up and automation together. This might be a good time to tell you about our story. Now, many of you might already know me. Again, my name is Mona Hilton, and I'm the CEO of Genesis Global Technologies, the authors of Advantage Anywhere. I started the company 25 years ago, but I'm not just a business owner. I'm also a wife, a mom to two amazing kids, and I'm a daughter of an aging mother. This is my mother. Her name is Margaret. She's 89 years young. She lives at home. And despite our protests, she still drives a car, <laughs> and she absolutely refuses to give up her independence. So I can tell you that I know your world that I'm describing firsthand. I've lived it. In June 1994, I started a technology company. In early 2000, we created Advantage Anywhere specifically for the purpose of addressing all the issues that we were experiencing with ACT and the clients that we had were complaining about their CRM. They said they were difficult to use, they weren't user-friendly, that they were partial or incomplete, and that they didn't incorporate all the tools you needed for marketing and social media and follow-up, and they required a bunch of add-ons that were expensive and inefficient. And at the end of the day, they were still using sticky notes as reminders. And of course, the big one was that the, their CRMs weren't helping them. It didn't nudge people to do the next steps to be successful. Well, for the last 19 or so years, we have never stopped asking business people just like you, what challenges do you face? What do you wish you could change? And I believe the common challenges can be grouped really into three primary areas. The first one is getting efficient and staying efficient, getting organized, consolidating all those disjointed tools that they're using. The second one was around developing systems, developing processes or workflows or next steps or whatever you want to call them, and then automating and enforcing them to make sure that the processes were being followed and being used. And the third one, of course, was around data, being able to track and manage information and report so that you had accurate information that you could make intelligent, informed decisions with confidence, knowing that the information was accurate. Now, as we noted earlier, as a society, we're busier than we ever have been before, but it feels like we're always running behind, and stress levels are the highest I've ever seen them in 25 years. I would submit to you that it's time to stop, get off that treadmill long enough to assess, reevaluate, and decide what is not working and why. That's why I love this 
uh, cartoon. It punctuates the sheer futility of being so busy, being busy, that we miss out on real progress, which of course eventually leads to the stress, the frustration, the burnout we see, not to mention those middle of the night, oh shoot moments. Now, I could stop here and easily make the argument that systems are the solution to all the challenges that we face today. Systems make your life predictable because, as I like to say, you can only duplicate your success when you can replicate your process. So just for grins and giggles, let's play a game. You in the mood to have a little bit of fun? It'll be fun, I promise. So I'm about to show you a slide with the numbers 1 to 100 on it. But the numbers are not in order. Once I show it to you, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to find the 1, find the 2, then the 3, and so on and so forth, all the way till you get to 100, okay? Okay, here's the slide. And here's 30 minutes, or 30 seconds on the clock. Let's go ahead and find the 1, 30 seconds, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. 20 seconds left. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, time's up. So tell me, how'd you do? Did anybody on this call get all the way to 100? If so, please send me a message. I've never had anyone get to 100. What about 75? No? Well, tell me, how are you feeling right now? Maybe you're a little flustered, you're frustrated. You might even be angry that I didn't give you enough time. That's fair. Probably wasn't. But now I want to show you a different approach. I'm going to try this again, but this time I want to show you a system. Here are the same 100 numbers, but now they're organized into four quadrants. And you're going to find that once you find the one, the top left, you're going to find the two in the same position in the second quadrant, and the three in the same position, and the four. And once you find the five, you'll easily find the six, the seven, the eight. You get the idea. So we're going to try this again. I'm going to give you another 30 seconds, and let's see how you do. You ready? Here you go. 30. 20 seconds. 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. All right, time's up. How far did you get this time? <laughs> I can tell you that when I do this live and in person, most people at least double their first score. And more importantly, they're much more relaxed. They're a lot happier with the results. How about you? The point of this exercise is to demonstrate how much easier, faster, and less stressful a project or job is when you have a system and you know how to use the system. I know, I'm preaching to the choir. So you might be thinking right now, you know, Mona, are you just telling me that we need a system? Are you telling me we need to get a CRM or we have a CRM or okay, okay, I'll get a CRM. That'll solve all of our problems. I'll tell you what, I wish CRMs alone were the answer, because if they were, we wouldn't have spent the last 19 or so years and all that money filling in the gap. But as we've already pointed out, CRMs are flawed, and they fail. And if they were everything you needed, you wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't have responded to this invitation. And everyone with a CRM would be crushing it. But we know that's just simply not reality. I'd like to share a clip with you that illustrates my point. You'll love this. I can't talk now because I'm working. All right, bye. How are you were saying? He's needy. Every day, it's, what did you do? Who did you talk to? Who did you email? And CRM. Doc, this is a partnership. I can't provide my 360 review if she doesn't share her daily activities. It's about being transparent. Who's that? Nobody. Who's Jordan now? He's a prospect. We're talking. 
Why do not know about it? We're talking. If CRM don't know about it, it don't exist. Fine. Then he doesn't exist. See, Doc? That's what I'm talking about. Disrespectful. Don't appreciate organization. Doc, I'm great at selling. She at the top. But I need some space so I can do it my way. Your way? Pen and post it notes? My system works. Spreadsheet? Yeah, and privacy. If CRM don't know about it. Then it don't exist. I sound like that? Yes. Uh, I'm only with you because mm. I'm forced to be. That is a great video, isn't it? Very funny. But it also makes an important point, and that is that there is still the matter of that dirty little secret that nobody talks about. But everybody inside the CRM industry knows it. You want to know what that is? Here it is. Less than 10% of CRM implementations are successful. You heard me. That means that more than 90% of CRMs fail. And that is a documented industry fact. Everyone inside the industry knows it. But you know what I find more troublesome? Is that most CRMs count on it and build their business model on that statistic. That is one, only one, but it's one of the reasons why there are so many CRMs. CRMs know that companies and organizations just like you are going to cycle through their CRMs. So we really have to dig a little further and say, what is the root of CRM failure? I would submit to you that the real reason people buy but don't use their CRM is the same reason that people pay for a gym membership but don't go to the gym. They think that getting a CRM or getting a gym membership is a magic bullet. They plan to go or use it someday, but there's no pressing reason and there's no accountability. Just having a gym membership won't make you healthy any more than having a CRM will make you successful. The gym and the CRM company will keep taking your money month after month as long as you're willing to give it. Trust me, I know. Last summer, I signed up for a gym membership for myself and my kids, and we were determined. In the beginning, we went three to four times a week. I actually joked that we had become gym rats, but I'm embarrassed to say that by the time November rolled around, we were going maybe once or twice a month, and finally, after month after month of us being no-shows at all, I canceled the membership. It's a well-known fact the gyms oversell memberships, counting on the fact that people won't show, but they're still pocketing the money month after month. Sad, isn't it? Now contrast that with the year I worked with a personal trainer. Yep, this is her. Her name is Peggy Schoolcraft, and she had won Miss Universe for bodybuilding, just in case you couldn't tell. And yes, in case you're wondering, she is just as tough as she looks. Peggy trained me for a year, and I was in the best shape of my life. But I had an hour slot twice a week, and I had to be there and be on the equipment, promptly on the hour. And if I ever mess, missed a session, Peggy fined me $50. <laughs> so guess what I did? You bet. I stuck with the program. Having a coach or a trainer is the difference maker between success and failure. I just cannot stress that enough. Having a coach and being accountable is literally what determines whether you're gonna succeed or whether you're gonna be a statistic. But let me ask you, what if my fitness coach looked more like this guy than Peggy? How do you think I would have performed or responded to him? Do you think I would have given him my very best effort? Would I have actually taken his advice seriously? Of course not. That's silly. You know, even my mom, as sweet as she is and as much as I love her, do you think I would have given her the same effort as I gave Peggy? Of course not. It's terrified of Peggy. Let me illustrate this another way. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that my daughter, Alexandra, plays competitive softball. I'm incredibly proud of her work ethic. And over the years, she's been playing since she was eight. I have learned so much about business from softball. 
and especially from observing different coaches and different coaching styles and watching their impact on the team's performance. Now, one pattern that I have noticed repeated over and over again is when she has been on teams where the coaches were incredibly nice people, really couldn't be better people, but they didn't set a high bar of expectations for their players. They didn't push their athletes. They would kind of overlook or turn their head um, when there was an error made, and they didn't fine-tune or correct, you know, the small behaviors, how you swing the bat, how you play the ball, and they didn't demand hustle. And they didn't demand very best effort from their players. And you know what? It showed every time. Despite having great talent on the team, sometimes where D1 commits, those teams did not get the results and they didn't get the wins. In fact, some of the best talented athletes on the teams would leave. Huh. Here's an interesting fact. Committed athletes want to be pushed. Think about that for a moment. That'll preach. Another observation is that athletes worked much harder and performed much better when their dad was not the coach. Now, just this week, my point was proven again. Alexander's summer team hasn't been playing at peak performance at all. It's been a tough summer to watch. But last Thursday, about halfway through a showcase tournament, there was a rumor spreading that the head of the softball organization was on the ground. He is known for being tough, for demanding and expecting only the best from his players. He has a reputation for developing and coaching D1 commits and winning teams. Girls come from across the state for a chance to play for his team. Wouldn't you know it, right before my eyes, I watched the team totally do a 180 that day. They went from losing games all week to winning both games that day. They were making their defensive plays and hitting the ball hard. In fact, my own daughter, who you see here, stepped up and hit two back-to-back -back home runs. So don't tell me that tough coaching doesn't work. It does. So let's kind of pull all this together. 90% of CRMs fail. Why? One, they were never the right for your business your business model, your industry. They weren't specific for what you do. Or two, they weren't customized. They weren't tailored for your unique needs. You just took it off the shelf and tried to use it. And three, of course, was an adoption issue. People don't use their CRM because they say they're too difficult, that they don't do anything for them. It's all the what's in it for me radio station. They haven't been trained properly. But most importantly, there's no accountability. So the conclusion that we come to is that CRMs alone are not the solution. So what is the solution? And here's the money. A complete system consists of having the right talent, plus having the right tools, plus having credible, firm coaching and accountability. That is the system that gets you to peak performance. That's it. It's not just having talent or just having a CRM or just having any of them. It's having all together that work well. Now, sometimes coaching can come from the inside. But then there's that whole daddy coach dynamic that we talked about earlier. It just doesn't draw out the best in people. More often, Coaching and consulting gets measurably better results when it's an outside expert source who has perspective, can be objective, and yields the authority to get peak performance and maximum results. Honestly, I would rather you have B-grade talent and B-tools, but an A-grade coaching and A-talent and tools with no coaching. Let me say that again. I'd rather you have B-grade talent and B-tools, but A-grade coaching, than A-talent and tools with no coaching. It's that important to the success of your people, to the morale of your teams, and the efficiency of your organization, ultimately to your bottom line. So what now? What do we do with this information? Well, for starters, I'd like to congratulate you. Congratulations on investing some of your time and attention today. I hope 
that this time together has given you an opportunity, or the space, if you will, to step back from all the busyness so that you could take an objective look at how your organization runs, how you use CRM, what you can improve, and how best you can incorporate those elements of peak performance that include executive coaching and accountability, whether we work together or not. However, if you do want to take the next step and you really want to get serious about making the most of your talent, your time, and your tools, I've got good news for you. We can make that a reality for you. We have a tool called Advantage Anywhere, and we work with our clients with really conscious, intentional executive coaching and accountability to ensure that you're successful. We have a version of Advantage Anywhere for most industries, especially community developers, uh, for senior living, for healthcare of all different kinds, for IT and software and general business. So if you'd like to learn more about uh, the system that we've created that includes the tool and the coaching and the accountability, send me a chat, reach out to me, whatever is most convenient for you. But also as my way of saying thank you to you for sharing part of your day with me, I'd like to give you two things. One, I'd like to give you free executive coaching session, either with myself or with an industry coach, depending on what industry you're in. I'd also like to give you the 37 stats every leader must know and measure. It's a video. It's my free gift to you. It's really a fun, toe-tapping music video, but it's packed with eye-opening stats that you may or may not be aware of and might just shock you. Well, our time here together is coming to an end, so I want to thank you one more time for joining me today. I'm honored you're here. I'd be super honored to meet you by phone or in person, so feel free to reach out to me if you need anything or if you just want to brainstorm. I really am committed to your success. So until next time, I wish you a fantastic day. Thank you.